Welcome back. Now, today we will discuss about microwave remote sensing. As the name suggests, this uh, remote sensing takes place in the microwave region where the wavelengths are long and can pen penetrate through cloud cover, haze, dust, and all the heaviest rainfall. Why? Because the longer wavelengths are not susceptible to atmospheric scattering. So, the limitation of uh, the smaller wavelengths uh, in the form of visible and infrared these problems are overcome by the microwave remote sensing now what are the different characteristics of rem uh, microwave remote sensing Remo interaction and scattering are the important features of radar surface it is also known as radar remote sensing and interaction and scattering are the important uh, features that take place in this kind of remote sensing and these interaction and scattering is dependent upon geometric and electric conditions of the surface that the electromagnetic radiation is going to interact with uh, such as material what is the type of material what is its orientation what is the moisture content and what is the surface roughness so the particular set of wavelengths which are used in microwave remote sensing includes K band and these are the wavelengths pertaining to those bands uh, sorry K band K band Q band X band C band S band L band and P band and these microwave uh, microwaves have important characteristics which include wavelength its polarization incidence angle and spatial resolution and uh, you know uh, we will talk about these things in the coming slides. Now, first, uh, we need to understand why do we need remote uh, microwave remote sensing. In optical remote sensing, where we normally use visible and infrared uh, regions of wavelength for capturing the image, th there is the problem of cloud cover. There may be poor illumination because the sun is not there. Second, there may be uh, clouds. Uh, particularly in the coastal regions and the valleys where uh, most of the times in rainy season uh, uh, you don't get a cloud free image so you you can you cannot see anything on the ground due to those uh, cloud so uh, uh, what is a ra radar system uh, comprised of uh, it illuminates a ground target with its own energy signal and in in return it 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 uh, uh, you know produce generates its own signal and targets it towards the surface and in return it receives a back scatter it's not the reflectance here as in case of optical remote sensing it's the back scatter uh, intensity of microwave remote sensing and it is independent of weather conditions as as already described in the previous slides now what are the different microwave bands we talked about x band now how x band can be useful the X band has a little lower wavelength, so you know it is scattered due to the leaves. So it gives you information when it scatters from the upper canopy itself, from the leaves itself. It, it gives you some information about the tree surface canopy. A C band has a little more penetration and it pe penetrates into through the leaves and uh, gets scattered by small branches and underlayer elements. You can see here uh, the X band and C band. Then comes the L band. It can penetrate through the surface layers and hence get scattered where it gets scattered at the trunk. So it, it can it has the potential to give you information about the uh, biomass and the main branches. And when now coming uh, towards the P band, uh, it it has the higher uh, wavelength and uh, pen penetrates deep into the canopy. And majority of P backscattering is observed due to trunk and trunk ground reflectance. So it's useful for estimation of biomass and the related things. Now, uh, backscatters of P and L are mostly related to estimation of biophysical parameters, which include volume and biomass of the uh, of the forest. So this is uh, these are the wavelengths. You can see X band three centimeter, twenty seven centimeter L band P seventy centimeter and and VHF less than so these are the applications of all of these bands in microwave region now another characteristic of uh, microwaves is the polarization now we know that when 
uh, you know uh, electromagnetic uh, radiation forms crust and uh, trough and it may be uh, running through the horizontal uh, vertical plane or it may be running as uh, a horizontal wave it may be as a hor vertical wave or it may be as a uh, vertical wave now once uh, you know based on those microwave sensors can emit the signals in h means horizontal polarization or v means vertical polarization so uh, sar uh, radar or synthetic aperture radar data can have hh polarization means the emitted and backscattered signals have the horizontal polarization which means to say when any satellite uh, you know uh, sends the uh, electromagnetic wave towards the target it may be in the form of uh, horizontal polarization and when it is uh, strikes the material and it it may uh, get uh, scattered back as vertical polarization so this uh, condition may be called as hv and in case the polarization of the wave is not changed upon uh, back scatter we may call that as hh polarization so in hv polarization the emitted signal has horizontal and the back scatter signal has vertical polarization likewise we can have vh polarization where the signal emitted from the radar is vertical and the received is horizontal and vv means where both uh, the signals emitted and reflected uh, emitted by the radar and reflected from the surface are vertical and there is no change of polarization we call that as vv polarization now uh, you can see this is how it can be represented uh, the horizontal polarization and uh, the vertical polarization and uh, this is how the hh polarization backscatter looks like this is the image this is how the hv backscatter uh, polarization looks like and this is how the vv back polarization uh, looks like and this is the you know fcc uh, having h h h h v and v v uh, band combinations now the scattering mechanism uh, also varies when the uh, you know um, uh, electromagnetic radiation strikes the surface the reflection can be smooth uh, it it uh, like uh, and it, it can be uh, you know uh, scattering can be scattering can be rough and where where the scatter is uh, into different uh, into different directions it can have a double bounce like any any building where uh, the the emitted this is the emitted uh, one and it suffers one bounce from the ground to the building and then it uh, is uh, gone away in the form of a back scatter the same thing can be observed in case of tree trunks where this is the um, uh, this is the uh, um, you know radiation uh, received at the ground then it is uh, bounced once to the trunk and then a double bounce going back to the sensor and this is volumetric scattering to the branches of the trees where the scattering practically goes in uh, every direction so this is the example single bounce scattering in case of roads double bounce in case of trees and buildings and volume scattering in in case of trees uh, different branches of trees so here wet soil has you know surface it's a uh, you know uh, smooth surface so we have a linear bounce here in case of uh, crop which has uh, which is irrigated uh, the one bounce may be through water then to the crops and uh, it may go like that so in case of uh, you know uh, crops we can have specular reflection as well now uh, synthetic aperture radar we know that what's the mechanism in synthetic aper aperture radar imaging microwave pulses are this is the form of microwave remote sensing uh, microwave pulses are transmitted by an antenna towards the earth surface it has an antenna sar antenna and the pulses are you know directed towards the surface and then are received back by the sensor the microwave energy scattered back to the spacecraft is measured now sar makes use of radar principle by using the time delay it uh, the back scatter is measured by uh, you know the time of which the uh, you know uh, you know radiation takes uh, 
uh, from uh, emitting to bouncing and uh, till the time it is received back uh, to form the image on the sensor. Now how the resolution is going to work, why we call that as synthetic, synthetic uh, aperture uh, radar. The resolution, ground resolution in radar, synthetic radar aperture Im radar imaging is um, you know governed by the size of the micro beam sent out from the antenna. Finer details on the ground can be resolved by using a narrower beam. The beam has to be narrow for the fine resolution. It has to be narrow. But the problem is that the smaller is the antenna because we, a large antenna cannot be placed on the uh, you know uh, platform uh, satellite itself. Uh, it, it needs to be 3-4 kilometers of uh, long antenna which is practically impossible to get a finer image, to get a narrower beam. So how can we get a narrower beam? The beam width is inversely proportional to the size of the antenna. The longer the antenna, the narrower the beam. Now how it is going, uh, it, it, it is, uh, you know, capitalized. SAR capitalizes on the motion of the spacecraft. It uses the motion of the spacecraft to, to emulate a large antenna. It emulates, it's not the actual antenna which is as large as, uh, you know, 4 kilometer. It emulates uh, the motion of the spacecraft to be the antenna and uh, from a 10 meter of antenna which is actually on the board on the satellite it can uh, synthesize an antenna of about 4 kilometers. So you can say the short antenna it has a wide foot, foot, footprint and a, and a, you know wider beam and in longer antenna you can see the beam is lower so having a narrow footprint giving you the high resolution. Now what is backscatter? Backscatter is the portion as in case of optical remote sensing we measure that in the form of reflectance values or digital numbers. Here uh, the reflect uh, here the you know values are uh, you know uh, measured in terms of backscatter. What is backscatter? Backscatter is the portion of outgoing radar signal that uh, the target redirects back towards the radar antenna. Backscatter is the energy which return to radar and this is received and recorded uh, by sensor. The strength of backscatter is expressed in terms of sig sigma or sigma naught. It is measured as db meter square backscatter cross section. As all values of ba ba backscatter are converted to logarithmic scale with the unit decibel. It is decibel meter square. So what are the applications finally the applications of because you know that microwave can work in all cloud free we can get cloud free images it can work in all weather conditions because it has the power to penetrate through clouds so that we can get an image on a uh, rainy day also it doesn't require to work during daytime as it, it is an uh, you know active remote sensor it has its own source of energy it can operate during night also, 24 hours whenever needed, whenever required. What are the examples? RISAT is the first indigenously developed microwave satellite. It's a multi-mode C-band which gives you images in the C-band, synthetic aperture radar. Then what are the applications? Applications can be uh, in agriculture, it can be in soil studies, it can be in forestry studies, it can be in earth sciences, it can be in snow studies hydrological studies, oceanography and disaster application.